Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Nail Roy. Welcome back to my channel, Fishing Trips. And we're back for another vlog, y'all. All right, check it. Y'all, look, check this out, man. I got one goal. One goal for this vlog, and that's it. I have drove 75 miles from Houston to do something that I've never done before, okay? Catch my first sheep head. That's right. I've never caught a sheep head before. Not only have I never caught a sheep head before, y'all, I've never even ate sheep head. I don't even know what sheep head tastes like. Is it good? Is it good? Comment below, sheep head good. So my goal is to catch one, just one keeper sheep head so I can drive it 75 miles back to Houston, attempt to clean it, attempt to cook it, and do my first taste test of sheep head for y'all. That's all I want to do. I said I was going to bring catch cleaner cooks, so all I got to do is go ahead and catch it, then take it back home and clean it, then cook it, then eat it. I think I can do it. All right, we've been out here about an hour. Whoa, bite! We got a bite, y'all. We on. Enjoy the vlog. Let's go! Driving around in California Looking for something to make me stay All right, y'all, so what I'm going to do is cast right near the rocks. Hope not get stuck. Hit. Hope I ain't on that goddamn jetty again. Oh yes, I'm on the jetty again. The same damn jetty before. Oh, got a bite. Wait. I can't even see my little bit. Oh, we on. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, baby. Get out the box. Get out the rocks, baby! Oh no, no, no. Oh no. So many days is yet to come. Too so many times has come to pass. Too so many moments put aside. Getting out alive, getting out alive. All right, we've been out here about an hour. Whoa, bite! We got a bite, y'all. We on. We on, checking the time. Get out the rocks, get out the rocks. Be a sheep head. Be a sheep head. Get out the rocks, get out the rocks, get out the rocks. We got a sheep head, baby. Let's go, baby. We got a sheep head. Oh, yes. This is my first sheep head. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Yeah, first sheep head. Look at them teeth on that bad boy. He up here like. Yes. All right, let's get a measurement because I need to get it back in the water. 15 and a quarter, baby. 15 and a quarter, baby. I see that? Woo-hoo, 15 and a quarter. It's a caper, baby. First sheep head caper. Yes. So yeah, man, um, that was my first ever sheep head. So we got something that we can attempt to catch, clean, and cook with. All right, y'all, so I'm back at home, back in the kitchen, and ready to do some cleaning and cooking. I hope you enjoyed the catch segment of the vlog, first sheep head, I'm excited. Now, as I tried to think to myself, what do I want to do for my first catch, clean, and cook on my channel? What can it be? What can it be? So many different options. And I thought about it. You know, the name of my channel is called Fish and Trips. So I decided I'm going to do fish and chips. That's right. That's right, y'all. Something simple. We're going to do some fish and chips, all right? So let's get started and um, see what we can do. Let's go. All right, y'all. So here is the star of the show. This beautiful specimen right here. Yep, yep, yep. Sheepy, sheepy. Yeah, sheep head, jailhouse, whatever you call them. All right, so check it out, y'all. So I did my research and they say that the sheep head is one of the most difficult fish to clean and fillet, which is kind of distracting because I have not cleaned a lot of fish before in my life. So the fact that they say this, this is one of the hardest ones has me a little worried, but I'm gonna give it a go, okay? Now, I watched a couple of YouTube videos and they made it look easy. So I'm confident I can do it, okay? Confident I can do it. Now, also look, y'all, check this out. 
I bought this filet knife on Amazon for like $15. I used it before in a video, and y'all was like, Renew, Renew, get a real filet knife, put that butter knife down. All right, so y'all bullied me, man. Y'all bullied me, and I got a Bubba blade knife. And yeah, if we're gonna flay a fish, let's try to use a real blade. All right, so there's a rib cage right here. You wanna avoid the rib cage, okay? So I'm gonna go above it. Now, what they say what I need to do is take the fin, okay? And we're gonna just kind of cut along the top of the head towards me, right there, right? So let's give that a try and see what we can do. Got some scales, stay on top of the rib cage. There we go. Oh yeah, all them damn scales. My wife hates scales, all right, so. Rib cage to the top there. All right, so I think I'm through. Like I said, I don't want to puncture the rib cage if possible. So, so far, so good. Now, from there, what we're going to do is go along the top of the spine as so, theoretically. So, right above the skin. Kind of follow along that spine. Once again, this is the first sheep head I've ever filleted in my life. So y'all gotta give me a break. Just follow that line. See right above the skin. Just taking my time, y'all, because I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. Stay above the skin right now. Oh, okay, there we go. Way easier now. I can feel it kind of going along that spine. And through the tail, like that. All right. Okay, so next, I'm gonna just start coming in and working our way through the meat. Like that. Just working our way through the meat. I'm trying to stay above the rib cage and not sacrifice so much meat. All right, see that? I'm just kind of working my way along that spinal cord. Let me pick her up. I'm trying to give y'all a good angle, but I'm messing up trying to do that. Stay above the rib cage. Just working my bubble. everywhere. Okay. This is going to be a real small fillet. It's all good though. Above the rib cage. One more little spot here. There we go. First fillet y'all. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of proud of myself. To be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? It looks pretty good to me. Got the grip. I mean, I feel like this grip is a little, has a thumb thing here, your thing right here, got one here. It almost feels like it's custom, like was meant for me or something like that. It's crazy. This is a nine inch blade as well. So it's gonna work away along the edge. Second fillet. All right, y'all, so here are our two sheep head fillet. I've never ate sheep head before, so I'm really curious to see what it tastes like. All right, y'all, so next up is my chips. Now, I could've, you know, took the easy route and just bought some french fries, but nah, nah. Your boy's gonna make some homemade french fries. Now look, check this out, man. When I was a kid, I used to make homemade french fries. Why? Because I used to ask my mama for McDonald's and get some french fries. Hey mama, can I have some McDonald's french fries? No, we got food at the house. You can make fries at home. So that's what I did. So yeah, so yeah, we're gonna um, wash these off, make some fresh french fries and drop them in the grease. Let's go. All right, y'all, so let me see if I can remember this recipe on how to make 
homemade french fries. I haven't done this in like 30 years, okay? Now I know some of y'all are trying to do the math. I'm 40 years old. I know I look good for my age. Hate the game. All right, so homemade french fries. To my knowledge, for what I remember, all we need to do, let's just start with a slice in half, right? Slice in half without slicing off my finger. Here we go. From there, we're gonna get another slice. Nice thin slice, there we go. See that? Well, that is kinda, you know. <laughs> Try another slice. Once again, protect your fingers, cut away from your body, away from your amenities. There we go. And those gonna be kinda thick, we're good with that. Slice it up again, protect your fingers, cut away at an angle, away from your fingers. I can repeat, cut away from your fingers. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, so you take your potatoes. I like the skin on. If you don't want the skin, you can skin them, but you know, a little skin, it's actually good. Then from there, you just create your fry. It's really not rocket science, y'all. All right, there goes our first set of fries. Yeah. You got, you got McDonald's at home. Damn right, I got McDonald's at home. All right, take our second one. Just kind of nice little thin slices. Okay. Simple, right? I bet some of y'all have never in your life eaten homemade french fries. You spoiled bastards. All right, second group. That's a big one right there. Let's slice it up a little bit thinner. There we go. Now I got these buds part. Let's see if I can how to slice it off. Just the bud in. Wash the fingers. Take your time, y'all. People rush in the kitchen. That's how accidents happen. No accidents. Slice it up. Add it to my collection of fries. So yeah, another important thing is like, you know, I don't know what they put in McDonald fries that make them taste so good. I think if I just work there for maybe like couple of days I can figure out what's going on behind the scenes or whatnot. So yeah man, that is my first group of homemade fries. Bruh, y'all missing out man. In the hood, we make everything homemade. Homemade fries, homemade hamburgers, you know, McDonald's version of our hamburgers. But that is our fries, y'all. Look at that. See that? That is going to be delish. Delish. All right, y'all, check this out. So I knew I was gonna be doing a lot of frying because, you know, I'm making my channel catch, clean, and cook. If you're gonna be catching fish, then you're gonna be doing a lot of frying. So I decided to do something, you know, I had never done before, and I bought a deep fryer. Check it out, man, check this out, y'all. Your boy got a chef-style stainless steel deep fryer. I picked this up at H-E-B, $40. That's right, y'all, only $40. But yeah, so it came with um, like three baskets as so has your temperature gauge here, 375. Um, it has like a charcoal grill to kind of help with that, you know, fish smell. And it comes with this lid, right? So as you can see, this entire tank, like this comes up and you just pull this whole thing out to clean it. So yeah, we're gonna just try that out and see how this goes for the first time. Not really sure, so hopefully it works, hopefully it works. Um, I'm gonna do my fries first because those take approximately 15 minutes to cook. And these are, you know, real, real deal McDonald's fries. So they might take about 30 minutes, but we'll see. All right. So what I'm gonna do next is make sure I'm gonna pack dry these because you want your potatoes nice and dry. Don't want to start no forest fires. Yeah, we'll dip them in. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. All right, so it does fit the entire basket. Now let, let us pray what's about to happen. Okay, so you take your basket, allegedly, remember this is the first time I've ever used this before, and you slowly drop it in. 
Oh. All right, hold on, hold on. I'm not about to have no Marvin Gaye moment. Let's make sure we get this top ready. Drop it in. And there we go. <laughs> Let's put our top on. And there we have it, y'all. Bye! All right, y'all, so it's been about eight minutes, so let's check on our fries. I don't want to overcook them. Oh, yeah, that looks great. Yes. Yes. So I think. All right, y'all, so next up, we're just going to do our fish batter here. Pretty simple. So all we need to do, I'm sorry, let me know something. Let's go on. We got some Zatare fish fry ready. Okay. Just a couple of eggs for batter. And everybody's favorite, Panko, Panko bread comes. Not sponsored, sponsor me Panko. All right, so first thing we need to do is um, get our, hold on, I'm missing one thing. Wait a minute. Get a small Ziploc bag. Super small filet, so I'm gonna use a small Ziploc bag. So what we're gonna do, let's get our, Xanaray fish fry here. Put it inside our Ziploc bag. Now, you know, growing up in the hood, we used to, used to use paper bags, you know what I'm saying? Fry fish, chicken, pork chops, get a paper bag. But, you know, I'm bougie now. My wife got a good job. We use Ziploc bags, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit, because we don't got little bitty fillets. Put that to the side. There we go. So next up, let's work on our base for our eggs. Crack an egg. There we go. Just one. Um, super small fillets, man. Thought I was gonna get a little bit more meat. Let's mix that up. We'll see if we need another. Let's see if we need another egg. There we go. Put that there. Get our panko. All right, let's open this up. Always be prepared, y'all. There we go. A little light coating. Like I said, y'all, we got barely any fillets. Say that for the next catch, clean, and cook. This is all you need right here, y'all. This is the sauce. So we're gonna take our beautiful sheep head filet. Let's put it in there, close the Ziploc bag. Sink it like a soft shaker. Sink it like a soft shaker. All right, nice little coating. Oh yeah, this um, Zana Rays is already seasoned. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all about it. Renell, why you putting no seasoning in it? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to make it too spicy. You know, my wife don't like it too spicy. So, you know, this is universal, y'all. So, um, take our filet. So, all right. Then from there, we're just gonna coat it in our egg yolk. Like that. Nice and thick. Perfect. Next, we're just gonna sit it in our panko breadcrumb. And we're just gonna get it all coated up here, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like flipping it. There we go. Yeah, we'll flip it around, flip it around. Get all the panko goodness. We'll just put it to the side here. Put it to the side. And just repeat the process. So take your filet. Hold on, y'all. Let me get my hands a little bit better situated. Remember, a clean kitchen is a godly kitchen. All right, so take our filet. Shake it up. Shake and bake, baby. Ricky Bobby, shake and bake. Get our filet. 
put it in the egg yolk. Just like that. Yeah, those french fries cooked in like eight minutes. I read online you're supposed to cook like homemade french fries 14 to 16 minutes, but apparently they didn't have one of those fancy deep fryers. So be careful, y'all. If you use that deep fryer, if you buy it, wash your food because it cooked in like eight minutes, like literally half the time. Could have easily burnt them. There we go. Cover it up. Beautiful filet. So there we have it, y'all. Can you see that? All right, so that is our fish. And let's put it in nice and slow. There she goes. All right. We'll set the timer for about four minutes just to come back and check it. Let's see how it goes. So far, so good. All right, y'all, so I put my fish in for four minutes on a timer. It's been about three minutes. Like I said, I don't know this deep fryer, so I want to make sure I don't overcook it. Wow. That was quick. It is done. It is absolute done. Look at that. That took three minutes. Three minutes. All right, let's go ahead and make our plate. All right, y'all, so there you have it. That is my um, fish and trips with my sheep head. So once again, I've never tried sheep head before, so this is gonna be a first. So let's give it a taste here. You know what, before I put some lemon on it, I just wanna taste the sheep head like by itself. People say it's good, but we'll see, hold on. Okay. I like, it has a good, good texture to it. Oh, this is fire. Okay, I see why people be talking about sheep head so much. This is really good. I think I would put sheep head. This is definitely better than red. Probably better than trout. I wouldn't say better than flounder, but it's really good. So let's put some lemon on here. All right, y'all, so normally when YouTubers do catch clean and cooks, they just kind of sit here and talk about how good their food is. But you know me, y'all, I like to multitask. So not only am I gonna test my food out, I'm gonna do a Q&A. Now, you remember like four months ago, I asked y'all, hey, ask me some questions, I'm gonna do a Q&A video. I know I'm like four months late, so better late than never. So um, I have my beautiful wife behind the camera who's gonna um, ask me some of the questions that y'all asked me, and I'm gonna see if I have an answer. Wife? First question. Where do you get all those positive vibes from even after having a bad day of fishing? Where do I get the positive vibes from after a bad day of fishing? I know it's like cliche to say like a bad day of fishing is better than a great day at work. It's true, right? So I'd rather be out on the water, just kind of enjoying everything versus being at work. So who's ever gonna complain about a bad day of fishing? I mean, think about all the you know things that's going on in the world today, you know? There's you know mass shootings, there's this craziness, so I'm never gonna complain about, oh, I don't even catch no fish. Okay, I'm lying. I do complain in my blogs all the time about not catching fish, but it's all about being positive regardless because you know what? Life is too short to be stressed, man. Especially being stressed about fishing. It's your life. Next. By the way, that question was from Delia Sanchez. Delia Sanchez, what's up Delia? Hey man, shout out Delia, man. She's always commenting on my videos one of the first person to comment on my videos. I made a new Instagram page. I think she's the first person to follow me on Instagram. So shout out Daily man. You a real one. Right. Justin Williams asked, what are some other things you enjoy doing in your free time mm -hmm. besides fishing and vlogging? Say Justin. Dustin Williams. Dustin, okay. What's up Dustin, man? Um, what else do I like to do? Um, well, before the you know quote unquote lockdown, I can't say the word to get demonetized. I used to love going to the movies. If I'm not going to the movies, I love watching Netflix. I love napping. I'm 40, man, I'm pretty boring. So watching Netflix, my wife's shaking her head, taking naps, going to the movies, that's like a good day for me, man. If I can go on a nice hike as well, boom, I'm chilling. So if I ain't fishing, I'm relaxing and just thinking about nothing. Next. 
Oscar Lopez asked, why are you zero for infinity catching rainbow trout? Wow. That's the energy you bring in, Oscar? First of all, them trout are races, okay? Y'all know for four months, I tried to catch my first rainbow trout. I failed every single time. Next time they stock, back in November 2021, I'm coming back for those rainbow trouts. I guarantee you. Watch me. Next. Sam P asks, what are your goals for the channel in 2021? Sam, what are my goals for the channel 2021? Currently, I'm sitting at 3,000 subscribers. I'm going to try to hit 10,000 by the end of 2021. Crazy goal, but I think I can do it. Mainly because y'all told me, you know, I made a poll. I asked like, hey, at the end of this year, how many subscribers do y'all think I may have? 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000. 80% of y'all said, I'm gonna have 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So you know me, I'm the people's champ. I don't wanna let y'all down. So I'm gonna push for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And from there, we're just gonna take over the world, right? We, we gonna do it. This is our channel. That's it, we good? Yeah, that's, you want any more questions? No, nah, I'm trying to eat. All right, y'all, so thanks for watching the video. Hey, check this out, man. Hold on. If you like this video, make sure to like the video. Then comment on the video. Talk to me. I respond. I respond. And share the video. And lastly, subscribe. If you made it to the end of this video, clearly you like me. So you might as well subscribe to the channel and see what's coming. Because I got a lot of stuff coming, y'all. Next week, y'all, I already got the video shot. It's already done, right? Speckled trout, fish tacos. It's going down. I sure you enjoy it. Thanks for your patience. I know it was a long vlog, but I think it was a good one. It's been real. I'm trying to eat. I'm starving. Sheephead, two thumbs up. Peace.